Hey, friends all over the world. Give me a minute here. I have an urgent word for the church. An urgent word for the church. I've been trying to make videos for the last several days, and it's like they wouldn't really go through. I was having technical difficulties, but this hit me so hard. And tonight, I have to release it. There is an urgent word for the church. And it's simple, yet it's very, very important. And if you're a leader, if you're, if you're involved with the church, if you're a pastor, whatever, I would encourage you to, to heed what I'm about to tell you. Cause this is, this is very, very important. Lately, the Lord has been dealing with me and he's been dealing with me very, very strongly. Uh, the Lord spoke to me going back, back, back to March of 2020, actually the end of 2019, as we're going into COVID. And he spoke to me, he showed me the, the, the dragon coming out of the sea uh, uh, that was COVID-19 and the, the effect it would have on the body of Christ. And of course, I've released several words since then. Then the Lord gave me a word about it was the church. Basically, it was people on the beaches of Normandy during World War II, and they were vacationing. They were actually, you know, sun tanning during the time of warfare, and they were just relaxing. Uh, and the Lord said to me, he said, my people are vacationing during warfare. They're not present. They're not ready. And of course, I released that word, but, but that's not what I have for you today. Here's what the Lord is saying. And I want you to, I want you to really heed this and, and really consider what I'm saying. He said to me, he said, the shift is coming. Yeah, you got to hear this. He said, the shift is coming. In fact, the shift is already here. And the reality is that the church will never go back to the way it's, it was. And there are many people right now who are trying to find normalcy. They're trying to find normalcy. They're trying to go back to the way that it was. And God said, he said, it will never go back to the way that it was. He said, because the way that it was, was never my design. In fact, I want to tell you this. This is what he said to me. He said, there is a glory storm that is coming to the church. And it's coming to the earth like we have never seen before. There's a manifestation of the authentic expression of the glory that is coming into the earth. And it is going to literally shift the culture of the church. And I'm telling you what has happened. Let me tell you what's been happening while so many pastors are frustrated. Many people have pastored with a pastoral model of church growth. In other words, you obtain members and you retain members. You obtain in order to retain. That is not God's design. It was never intended to be that way. It was never intended for us to gather and to just expand our gatherings and to become, the Lord said that the church has become bloated. It's become bloated. And when you're bloated, you need a release. You need a release. Something has to be released. And the Lord is literally saying to the church today that there is a shift coming and we are shifting out of this uh, denominational pastoral model and we are shifting into an apostolic slash prophetic glory model of the church. What is that? That's Acts chapter two through Acts chapter six. And what happens is that when the glory comes in, when the glory comes into the church, when the glory, when the, when the church, the, the physical edifices become houses of prayer, where they are housing and cultivating an atmosphere of the presence of God, it is a place where miracles, signs, and wonders will begin to manifest once again. God is saying that it is time out for games. You know, it's time out for these church games where we have healing meetings and people 
come and they get healed of a headache and they go home and then they take more aspirins. It's over. Th those days are over. Those days are over and God is bringing us into the, sh he's shifting us into the glory. Now here's the problem. Many people have never experienced the real glory of God. And so, and so watch this. And I've said this before. God told me, he said that COVID was a dress rehearsal for the supernatural. And that the purpose of allowing that thing to hit the way that it did was to train the church into total dependency on the power and presence of God. It was to train us to depend on the power and presence of God. And during that time, there was a separation. In fact, I released a word about that, that there was literally a, a separation based on the book of Jeremiah. God told the Israelites that he told Jeremiah to tell the Israelites, I'm about to thresh her on the threshing floor. And during that time of threshing, there will be a separation. I want to encourage some pastors. There's some pastors listening to me and you have literally contemplated giving up on ministry. Some of you have already given up. You've gone back to the secular workforce. You've gone back to whatever your degree was in. And you did that because it was so hard to pastor. It was so hard to pastor. You know, it was so hard to pastor people because folks were inconsistent and people were uncommitted and disloyal. And you were just like, man, I, I can't do this anymore. And you gave up and you went back like Peter, you went back to fishing. You went back to your vocation. You went back to your occupation. And God said, no, no, no. There was a time of separation. I need you to hear me by the Holy Ghost. He said there was a time of separation where I was separating the church. I was separating the wheat from the tare. I was separating those who are of faith and those who are of fear. And God literally drew a plumb line prophetically in the body of Christ. And he caused those who were fearful to be on one side and those who are in faith to be on another. You think it's about, and the Lord said to me, I was praying and he said, he said, things are not what they seem. People are trying to survive right now. The church has been in survival mode. They're like, man, how much more of this can we take? You know, I just want to get through this next year. What do we need to do? What do we need to stock up on? And the church has been stockpiling. We've been stockpiling as a church. We've been stockpiling, 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 hoarding and saving. People have not even been releasing what's in their hand to the degree that God has called them because of fear, because of the prophetic voices that have told people, you know what, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. You need to save, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not against saving, and I'm not against preparation. But here's what I'm trying to explain to you. This has been from COVID till now to 2022 was a time of separation where God was separating wheat from tear. He was separating wheat from the tear. He was separating those who truly trust in him and those who did not. And here we are in this season. We are in yet another sift and another shift. And this is a time of divine alignment. And God is really trying to, to shift us into the glory. He wants to shift us into the glory, not just the anointing, not just the power of God, but the glory realm where there is a level of miracles, a level of signs and wonders that the church has never experienced before. Think it not strange, beloved, when God begins to move the way he desires to move. And there will be those who will be resistant at first. But one of the things about the glory, you can't resist it. It's irresistible. That's why when Solomon, if you study Second um, Chronicles chapter 6 and Second Chronicles chapter 7, you will understand the way the glory operates. When Solomon made a sacrifice, this is so important to understand. Study Second Chronicles chapter 6 because there is a sacrifice that brings the glory. I don't know if you all understand this. There is a sacrifice that brings the glory, that invites the glory. And that's what they did. They made a sacrifice to the Lord that was so magnanimous that God literally came down in the glory cloud in the temple. And the Bible says that the glory of God was so manifest that the priests were not even able to enter into the temple. And that's what we're coming into. There's a weighty manifestation of the glory of God that is hitting the earth 
like we have never experienced before. When we study Acts chapter 2, the, the, the day of Pentecost came in and the glory came into the earth. And then Acts chapter 3, we saw the healing, the miracle at the gate beautiful. That was a manifestation of a sign and a wonder according to Mark 16. And so watch this. A man that was born crippled from his mother's womb got up by the prompting of Peter. When Peter laid his eyes on him and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given unto thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus, rise, take up your bed and walk. He told him to rise and take up his mat. Watch this. He was instantly healed. His ankle bones received strength. He was totally restored miraculously. And this provoked an outpouring of the glory in the church. Then, of course, Acts chapter 4, the apostles get beaten and humiliated publicly by the religious leaders. And then they're filled with the Holy Ghost again. They're filled again. By Acts chapter 5, something begins to happen. The Bible says that when the people uh, respond to this, that literally something happens where the people intuitively understand that everything they possess belongs to God. And they begin to pour out their resources. They begin to pour their resources to God and nobody had lack in the body of Christ. See, this is why, listen to me, a lot of you don't understand this and you've missed this because we haven't preached this. We haven't taught this in the churches. We haven't told you about it because preachers have not necessarily been on this page. But I'm going to tell you something. There is an outpouring of the glory of God that will cause a harvest of provision to come into the church. In fact, if you study scripture carefully, you will see this is totally scriptural. The Bible says in Isaiah 60, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Watch this. For nations shall come to the brightness of your rising. Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness of people, but the glory of God shall be seen upon you. And as a result of this, nations will come to the brightness of your rising. And if you study the text, study the first 10 verses in Isaiah chapter 60. And what happens? The Gentile nations, the uncircumcised nations, the ungodly nations are drawn to the glory. And when they come to the glory, they bring their resources with them. They bring their gold, their silver, and everything that is necessary to the house of God. Are you hearing me? Now, the Bible tells us that 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter, um, 1 Corinthians uh, 6 verse 19 says this. It says, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which we have of God and we are not our own, but we've been bought with the price. So it's not just the building, although there will be manifestations and glory manifestations in the building. There will be manifestations in the building. However, this is not just a matter of a physical edifice. There will be manifestations in the physical edifice. There will be revival meetings in the physical edifice. But it extends beyond that because when glory comes to this house, this one right here, this temple, this house of prayer, this, what the Greeks call naios, which means the most sacred dwelling place. The most sacred place of the manifestation of the glory of God is in this temple, this physical body. And the Bible says that when this glory comes, it will provoke such as I feel the glory right now. I'm telling you, even on this live glory to God, the glory is filling your room, is filling your house is filling wherever you are. The presence of God is coming wherever you are. It cannot be shut out. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be manipulated. It cannot be prostituted. It cannot be pimped. It cannot be controlled. Are you hearing what I'm telling you today? And so the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me and says, a shift is coming. A shift. We're shifting Watch this from illustration to demonstration. The church has preached illustrative sermons. We've got on the, we, we, you know, we put props on the stage and, and we do 
you know, we put props and, and, and have background and all these creative things going on. God says the church is moving from illustration to demonstration. Well, we're not just going to do creative sermons anymore, but we're going to demonstrate the power and presence of God. God says the church is moving from being spectators. Right? Where there's just spectating going on to participating, participation, where we're actually partnering with God. Good God Almighty. We, this is not a movie. Sunday service is not a movie. It is not a talk. It is not a motivational speech. It is where the gospel is being proclaimed from that sacred desk. And from that sacred desk, the gospel is being proclaimed. And as a result of that, God confirms his word with signs and wonders and miracles. I'm telling you, church, the shift. And, and listen, don't fight this. Don't even try to fight it. You don't stand a chance. You do not stand a chance. Don't even try to fight this. Don't try to stop this. Listen, and let me say this last thing before I get ready to go. And I said this before. The Lord said, said this to me, and I said this in one of my messages. The church has been afraid of the real supernatural. The church has been afraid of the real supernatural, and we've actually demonized the supernatural out of fear. Because, watch this, we're, we're only used to certain things happening. We're only used to laying hands on people and them falling out. We're only used to, you know, uh, 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 people crying at the altar. But, but what if God really wants to show up in our churches? What if God really wants to manifest himself? And what if we really begin to see the weight of his glory? The ancient rabbis called it the Shekinah or the Shekinah. The Shekinah. And they call it that because it was a heavy presence, a heavy smoke that they would see in the temple. And it was so heavy that they could not penetrate it. it the weight of it would weigh them down and all that you could do is fall to the ground. That's the Shekinah or the Shekinah glory. The Hebrews called it the Kavod. Some people say, pronounce it Kabod, K-A-B-O-D. But it's actually Kavod, the Kavod, the heaviness, the weight. The weight, that there will be a weighty presence, a weighty glory. We will no longer be afraid of the supernatural. We'll no longer try to demonize the supernatural and try to anybody that's walking in something that we've never seen before, we call them a demon and a witch and a warlock and all this kind of stuff. No, no, no. I'm not talking about strange fire. I'm talking about real fire. Because watch this. If there is a counterfeit, there must be a real. If there is a counterfeit, there must be a real. If there is a counterfeit, there must be a real. The presence of the counterfeit is evidence of the real. Because you can't counterfeit something that's not real. You can't counterfeit something that has not already been created. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And so what I'm saying to you is that this is, and I've been preaching this, the Lord told me back about five months ago, six months ago. In fact, he even told me last year in 2021, he told me that there would be radical faith, radical obedience, and radical giving. Radical faith, radical obedience, and radical giving that will reshape the fabric of the church. We are coming into a time where the where no one will have need of anything in the body of Christ. We are coming into a time because of radical faith, radical obedience, and radical giving. We are shifting into the glory realm. We are shifting into the manifestation. Not just illustrations, but demonstrations. Well, we are no longer afraid. I'm talking about some of you going to walk out of your house and you're going to be in another country. And then, then, then they're going to call you a witch. They're going to call you a witch. You're going to walk out of your house and be in another country, just like Philip. 
Philip was translated. Enoch was translated. Elijah got taken up. You're going to literally, I'm telling you, you're going to literally, my daughter, let me give you an example. My daughter, they were at the grocery store and, and they went to one store and they needed somebody. They run out of money. They go to a Walmart. They pull into the parking space. A raven comes down with $50 in his mouth. A raven comes down with 50 crisp dollar bills in his mouth. I'm telling you, you're going to see food multiply. We begin to see this in our meetings. I remember this is about, this is over a decade ago. We begin to see food multiply in our meetings. We had a, we had a, um, all night, not an all night. It was a, a watch night. I'm sorry. Like a, a new year service. So we had this new year service and we had some Cuban, you know, Cuban bread and, uh, Cubanitos and some wings. And that's all we had. We didn't have a lot of money. And so we didn't really have a lot at that time. We just wanted to get a little something to just take care of people after they had been there all night long uh, at, at 12. And so uh, there was enough for our family. At the time, I think we had a family of three, a family of two. Yeah, it was my wife and our two children. And so what happens is that it's our wife and our two children. No, it was our wife and my daughter. I don't even know if my other daughter was born yet. She might have been. Yeah, it was my wife and my two children. So we go there, and they, we had a packed out meeting. People had come from everywhere. It was the biggest meeting we had ever had. And we were like, man, what are we going to do? Because we only had enough food for our family, but we wanted to feed everybody. So I told them, hey, just dish out the food. So we began to dish out the food, dish out the food, dish out the food, dish out the food. And something profound happened, something supernatural happened. The food wouldn't run out. I ate about six chicken wings on my own and three sandwiches on my own. And that was almost half of what we had. Then my my children ate, my wife ate, our staff ate. And now watch this. So when you look at this, the food didn't run out. People kept eating, kept eating, kept eating. And then finally I took it home. I took it home. We ate off of that tray of food for over a week. And this is the kind of thing that's going to begin to happen in the body of Christ. Money multiplying, all kinds of miracles, instant healing, people getting out of wheelchairs, blind eyes opening. Things will become normal, absolutely normal. So you have to understand, this will happen when you look at the Bible in 2 Chronicles 7. What did Solomon do? Not only did he offer a fast unto the Lord and the people, of course, he talks about repentance, but there was a, an offering given to the Lord that was so big. They sacrificed. It was the biggest offering in Israel. And I'm telling you, many of you don't understand this. And this is why we've missed the move of God because we've tried to over spiritualize the glory. The glory doesn't need to be over spiritualized. It's already spiritual. The glory does not need to be over spiritualized. It's already spiritual. When the glory comes in, there will be a tangible manifestation. We got to stop all these religious games. Stop all these religious games. And somebody's asking about repentance. Yeah, repentance is in the Greek concept of repentance is not just crying. See, we've cried long enough. We've cried long enough. We need, we need more than tears. We need more than tears. We need transformation. The church has been sitting in a corner and crying for decades and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. What we need is repentance. What we need is repentance. What we need is repentance. Real repentance, metanoeo, which means a change of mind which corresponds to a change of action. And for those of you who say, well, glory has nothing to do with money, you are a liar and you are biblically illiterate. You've never read the Bible. Because if you study Acts chapter 5, those people brought finances to the church. And this is the problem. This is why mosques have shot up. And this is why uh, Unitarian churches have shot up. And this is why Scientology churches have shot up. And this is why all kind of... Um, um, uh, uh, Buddhist temples have shot up because the church has not understood that when you come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus, everything you have belongs to him. And if you want to talk about repentance, you know, we need to re really repent. How many know that 
statistically, 6% of Christians in America tithe. We want to talk about glory. We want to talk about the, the spirit of God and the presence of God. And, and I want to feel the presence. And if, if, if we want to talk about this biblically, study the gospel of Luke. When you believe something, every part of you buys into what you believe. And until that happens, and I'm not talking about buying the Holy Ghost and see, cause that's that religious demon. I've never, I've never advocated us buying the Holy Ghost. We can't buy the Holy Ghost. We can't buy the Holy Spirit. We can't buy the move of God. But let me tell you something where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. And if we don't understand that every part of us has to be vested in this next move. We're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. And so I submit to you today, a shift is coming. God is getting rid of this religiosity. He's getting rid of the religious pride. He's getting rid of the unteachableness. He's getting rid of the fakeness and the phoniness. And he is bringing us into a place of the authentic expression of heaven on earth. When heaven invades earth and eternity invades time. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you all. I'm trying to explain it to you the best way I know how. Heed this word from the Lord. Heed this word from the Lord. The shift is coming. The shift is coming. I say again, the shift is coming. God bless you.